this first Sunday, this men Sunday. The glory is the manifestation of the excellence of all of God's great works. We thank God for what is the witness of what has gone forward today. Amen. Amen. When we let go, we let God. The devil don't care what you need as long as you stay silent. Yes. Speaking is a fundamental principle that we made in the image of our Creator. Amen. 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 I want to ask that right where you're seated at, join me in the throne of grace and prayer. Yes. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity to address this house again and your flock. I ask that you let your glory saturate this place and your anointing sweep this place in such a way that we walk into it and we leave this place boldly. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. Amen. I will meet you in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I will meet you in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Pick up at verses 9 and 10. I'll stand you at the appropriate time. As Pastor said, we, we stand for all kinds of other things. We stand for the national anthem. So I'll stand you for the words when the time comes. We'll read those scriptures and we'll press on. We thank you for all belated birthdays and all the June babies in the month of June. This is the first Sunday in July. And I'm coming. We'll do the same for the July babies as well. Mother's Day and Father's Day have come to pass, and if we say that if it comes to pass, it didn't come to stay, but every day should be Mother's Day and Father's Day as we press on. Amen. Amen. Give it on to God, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to the pastor of this church, as the Cynthia Shores pray, to the deacons, the mothers, the power of the pew, which is you. And as I look out, I want to say, welcome with a smile because it's the with that matters. Pastor tells us that God plus you equals more than enough. So there has to be a with portion in there. We're so glad to have you today. The key to success in life is taking responsibility for your actions. Responsibility is personal. And as we look at growth in life, the G, go with God daily. The R, read your Bible daily. The O, faith Christ moment by moment in your life. Witness for Christ with the words that come out of your mouth. For we are ashamed of him, he will be ashamed of us. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And holiness is not in what you do, it's what you don't do. And some would say it's not in what you don't do, it's what you do. So as you see, there's a duality of life as you press forward on in there. And this study was going to be the continuation of a survival handbook. And the Lord interjected and said, not this Sunday. <clears throat> so I'm going to give to you what he gave to me. And like we say, don't you know, dry skin, I would ask that you would take these words and run them in. You have heard the caveat, the warning of we can't just sit. There is an application piece to the word. Yeah. So a lighter moment before we get into the word. In the 70s, the comedian Flip Wilson, and a lot of the comedians, they are always imitating preachers. So I'm going to give you a lighter moment before we get into the word. And he was putting on this pastoral imitation, some would say. And it was like, in order for this church to begin and grow, we first have to crawl. And it was like, amen, Reverend, let it crawl, let it crawl, let it crawl. And they said, after we start to crawl, then we have to walk. And they said, amen, Reverend, let it walk, let it walk, let it walk, let it walk. And then once we start to walk, the church has to run. Amen, Reverend, let it run, let it run. And then he said, once we begin to run, it's going to take some money. And the church said, let it crawl, let it crawl. <laughs> a lot of times we see when we begin something, James 1 and 22 tells us we can't just be hearers of the word. We're deceiving ourselves. 
you know, we want a six pack of abs, and then we sit down and we begin to do those sit ups, and we decide, eh, this marshmallow filling is okay, that's work. We have to be more than curers. We have to be doers of the word. The doers are the ones that make a difference. So, in this, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for just this feeling. Let me prepare you to have the rest of your life as the best of your life. Now, I would ask you please stand for the reading of the word coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll read verses 9 and 10 and we'll press on. Amen? Amen. Those of you that can't stand and if you have an affliction and something is ailing you, please remain seated. Uh, most of the year 2017, uh, after June, I remained seated, so I thank God for being able to stand. Yeah. And as I look around, Pastor Cynthia, everybody is up uh, for the war. Hallelujah. Good word. Uh, we'll press on. God bless you. We love you. Verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities in persecutions in persecutions in persecutions in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You may be seated. Amen. 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 Message theme and title today, My Strength is Made Perfect in Weakness. And I would ask for a digital application when you see it again. My strength is made perfect in parentheses, your weakness. Before we go forward with the word, I want to take you back in time in the Bible to illustrate a point. And this is a point that Pastor Cynthia, probably three years ago, preached this sermon. And it goes by and it pictorially illustrates, but this is life application, saints, of where we're at. So I want to take us back to a time. And I want us to just remember the essence, because this is real life application. Even though it was then, it applies now. I'll continue on. Today's word will be diagnostically and very prescriptive in approach to where you'll be able to hear and apply. Not one of those super profound things where you'll need a teaching calculator and what did he say? Again, like lotion on dry skin, you can simply take these words and rubber band, you'll get instant application. Moving on. Now it happened as they were coming home, when David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women had come out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul, with tambourines, with joy, and with musical instruments. So the women sang and danced as they said, Saul has slain, slain thousands, and David is ten thousands. And then here's where life application comes in, saints. Then Saul was very angry, and the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed only thousands. I don't know how close to be. Now what more can he have but the kingdom? This is King Saul. Not King David at the time. King Saul. So a lot of times in life, for those of you that are connected to organizations, you have bosses that hey, bring me the smartest person in here so I can fire them and they'll never take my place. That is not how it should work in the kingdom of Christ. So we see here, instead of dwelling on the great deliverance that God had just brought about through David, Saul focused on what he considered a slight downgrade to his position to himself. So back to the big eye and with you as we press on in life. This self-focus eventually destroyed him. Saul became jealous, jealous of David's victory over Goliath and the national attention that he received. The young warrior had upstaged the king. Saul's jealousy led to anger, resentment, fear, and attempted murder. Angry and ready to tip over at any moment, uncontrolled jealousy can lead to destruction. 
construction. Another life application moment for all of us. We must take our jealousy to God, asking him to appreciate others' talents while showing us how to use our own. Amen? Amen. If you're going to be applying this, biblically, the word tells us to esteem others higher than who? Ourselves. Ourselves if we're applying that. Yes. Hmm. What was King Saul doing? The word strategic means plan. Not the printed word, as we say, but the practice word. Not what you say, but what you do in actions. Praying the word, <clears throat> not the worry, and the promise, not the problem. We said before that problems simply come to purify our faith. Purity means we are free from contamination. The Bible is the only infallible written word of God. And we see the last four words in Mark 11, 22, how are we to do this? Have faith in God. Yeah. Now we live in a day and time where everything is charismatic and people are adding and subtracting from the word. So we need to be able to understand the word for ourselves and we get Bible study for that. Amen, and soon to be the return of Sunday school so that we can apply the word. As we return back to the main theme, amen. amen. My strength is made perfect in weakness. So how do we experience the duality of the message as we press through life and apply the profoundness of those last nine words that Paul speaks in verse 10? Life application again. For when I am weak, then am I strong, the King James Version ask the question, other versions say, I am strong. So the most important thing to say as we're going through things in life is what we say to ourselves connected through Christ, amen? amen. amen. Not the infomercial, new from Roncore, you know, those six word slogans, relief is just a swallow away. But in this Bible, Belief will help you fall the way, amen? amen? And you have to be connected to the source. If a 30-second TV commercial can sell you a product and a 30-minute sitcom will likely sell you a lifestyle, then I would say be engrossed in your Bible, amen? amen. Really, what did Jesus do? The initial question was what would Jesus do? What did Jesus do? The most important of that, because the world got caught up in WWJD, WWJD. What would Jesus do with this? That's the question. How many people in your life have you asked a closing question with a simple yes or no as a response? And then you got all these. Well, let me tell you why that happened. It was like a yes or no. You don't want to know. You just want to know. If it's no, then it's definitive. That's so why it happened. If it's yes, it's an excuse. We live in a time now where people can simply justify their excuses, their lack of productivity with excuses. When we're connected to Christ over and over and over and over and over. Pastor said this sandpaper smooths things, so sandpaper had rough times in our life have a purpose, amen? Amen. What is that purity purification piece? When gold is purified, we see the elements of black smoke coming out of the fire. What is that? It's the impurities. A piece of coal, the way a diamond starts out, is just something that did well under pressure. If you look at what a diamond was before it's in its final state, it starts out as a piece of coal and goes through a lot of pressure and comes out a diamond. Some say I'm breaking, I'm scratching. But if you look at its initial form, fragile. So as we deal with fragile self and get back to the main theme, Isaiah 40 and 31, and I'm taking us around to lay a foundation in a sense. But they that wait upon the Lord, the word shall came out of the opening <clears throat> scripture this morning, renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And she'll walk and not faint. Shall, absolute as we press on. So again, another takeaway <clears throat> for the word is, in times of trouble, the most important thing that's said 
it's what you say to yourself. So when you are, if you are following the illustration of Paul, for when you are weak, you are strong. But will you tell yourself in the time of struggle or will you become disoriented and then get to that? Sudden death is instant victory. Or do you believe that it's sudden death? No, you tell yourself it's instant victory. It's how we apply the word. It was not meant to be reactionary when it's done. Straightway the Bible uses immediately we put it on. And if we're connected to the source, Galatians 6 and 9 tells us to let us not be worried well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So we see the application, oh, I'm tired. No, you're not tired. I'm ready to, I'm ready to relax. I'm ready to rest. It is our self-talk saints as Christians that will make the difference. We see in Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ which listens to me. That looks great on a t-shirt the written part of it, but are you applying it in your life when something really comes along? Pastor says, well, if you ask for strength, then guess what? A golf ball is not going to roll down the hill. A boulder is. So we have to be careful what we ask for. I can do this. Lord. I, can, I can do this. It's how we prepare, we prepare ourselves. Again, great to see written, but not the written word, but the practicing of the written word. We have to stop reading and start applying again. In our handbook for, for survival, coming from Jude 1 and 3, which this should be part 2 today, but the Lord said no. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort, which means to bring forth strongly, like y'all did during testimony time. Y'all exhorted and brought forth strongly. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because if you don't, then the devil's going to shackle you. Yeah. That 33 to 32. Gotcha. But y'all took it today from 211 to 212. Amen? Amen. If you don't let go, stay in silent and ain't going to do it. Did that for years. Don't take 30 plus years like I did. Don't let go of that God. Amen? Amen. You had these last two years and the injection of whatever this fuzziness or whatever and COVID fatigue and pandemic, pandemic fatigue and this, that, and the other, and it's impacting everybody. So if you're outside, if, you, if you're doing anything, you're seeing that people all dressed up and miscounting, misapplying, uh, want no cheese, added cheese, uh, I want cheese and you get no cheese. It's everywhere. Don't be a part of that. Judgment, thinking logically and clearly at all times. When you start your day, connect yourself to Christ. Amen? Amen. If you feel weak, tell yourself you are strong. And it's the speaking of that word that makes the biggest difference. Amen? Amen. Yes, if we look at our Christian lives like a vehicle, we just don't go to the gas station one time and fill up and go. When we do, we go back again yeah. and again. And again, and again, and again. So as we said before, we don't go to the doctor just one time. And for those of us that do, when we go a second time, as Pastor always says, discovery is amazing. But if you're doing the regular and ordinary, then discovery is never amazing. Amen? Amen. But God wants us to get from the regular and ordinary to extraordinary. Yes. Uh, I already know what it's going to be. Mm -mm. That's what the devil wants you to say. Mm -hmm. So as we said before, like one bath won't last your lifetime, neither will one reading of this Bible. Mm -hmm. Over and over and over and over again. How do we do that? Jude tells us it's about contending for our faith. Contend, fight. We fight for our faith. So again, Nozzle in the tank, Hebrews 11 and 1. Oh, I've heard that before. Hey, I just put the accent two weeks ago. Same analogy. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. How do we get weakness and strongness and strongness and weakness by simply believing in our faith in Christ? 11 and 6 tells us, but it is impossible to please him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Yeah. Diligently, painstaking, contend, fight. So as we see strategic warfare, 
demand strategic play. Spiritual warfare demands strategic play. Strategic planning. So you need to know when you get up. Something may happen to throw you off balance, but what are you going to do? So if we tie in the Old Testament and look at the word in Ephesians 4 and 31 to look at where Saul was, Ephesians 4 and 31 simply tells us that all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Hmm. In the Old Testament, King Saul, I should be celebrating. And if you know what led up, and we do know because we've had that, you know, David getting to do what he did. Uh, there were others who probably were to be in front of Goliath, but again, God doesn't call the equipped people to equip those who he calls. David did what he needed to, should have been a time of celebration, and we saw the criticality of the king. We live it at our homes, we live it at work, we live it in society. Biblically, the Bible will go where you're celebrating, not where you're tolerating. Before you make that disconnect, you need to know. Greater things happen in David's life for every moment that he was weak because, in essence, he was strong. No way he should have been able to take down the giant. But because of belief, he was able to get what he needed to get done. Galatians, the book of 5, chapter 5, verses 19 through 26, addresses the manifestations of the flesh and the spirit. Stephen Jackson, today is one of those days. I thank you for your patience for that reset there. Nozzle in the tank again. It's time for gas. What word that before? You put it in. 87, 91, 93, whatever. It's the same stuff that keeps you going. 5, 22, and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such the original law. Hmm, I've heard that before. Well, you put gas in your vehicle before. And in this Christian analogy, it's the application of the scriptures over and over and over again as we go through. The Garden of Gethsemane was a place that we know what happened to Jesus, but he didn't just go there one time. So we said, why did he go more than one time? That happened to him. Because he knew. Because he knew it was a place that he loved to go to pray. In 522 and 23, Love begins in Galatians, and we said that list is akin to the one in 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 5, picking up with virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, kindness, and charity. That list ends with love. One list begins with love, the other one ends with love. So we're all growing, or should I say becoming more like our Heavenly Father. So I pray as we continue to quiet ourselves before the Father, we need to be able to ask him, are there any works of the flesh, flesh manifesting in our lives? Not only we, but we, she, and he need to be able to stand before the Lord and ask that question. Because we know what was working in Saul's back then in the Old Testament. Works of jealousy we see in the Old Testament. And here we are, supposed to be in the crossover time. For when I am weak, therefore I am strong, other versions say. Works of the flesh stunt our spiritual growth. Works of the flesh will stop rapid ascension or no ascension. If you ain't going nowhere, you'll just go down. That's what our enemy wants. Works of the flesh stunt our spiritual growth. I want to ask you four questions and you can answer them while you're seated to yourself. You do not need to speak the answers out aloud. <laughs> your mind is the last frontier of privacy that you have. Once you open your mouth, it's no longer private. <laughs> Question one. You can blink and think, but please, no audible responses. Have I followed the spirit of 
Have I allowed the spirit of jealousy to creep in and control my process of thinking? Question one. Question two. Have I allowed the spirit of jealousy to come in and control my actions? Question three. Have I allowed the spirit of jealousy to come in and destroy godly relationships? Have I allowed the spirit of jealousy to come in and destroy my power to witness to others? I want you to remember, when jealousy rises its ugly head, so does his friends. Envy, strife, fits of anger, whining way too long, wallowing in issues of the mind. Spent five years at Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point, and, you know, the air wing, and, and swing with the wing, and there was this thing, you know, that what's the difference between a jet engine and a jet pilot? And like I said, when a jet engine runs out, when it runs out of fuel, it stops whining. Ooh. Took me a while to figure that. So what does that mean? Oh, the jet pilot whines all the time. Every time you see him, they're whining. So the engines out of gas can't whine no more, but the pilot is constantly whining. When afflictions and things come our way, failure is simply the fertilizer for success if we don't wallow in it. There's a breaking in the blessing, and there's a blessing in the breaking. Duality, if you apply it both ways, as long as you keep Christ in there, you will get the sanitization piece that needs to happen. But if you wallow in it, that's not going to matter. In your professional settings, a lot of times we go to work and we're just wrestling with a pig. We get out there in the slop and we wrestle with it, and we have to go down at home and take a shower, and the pig is still in that mess. Pig, I'm coming to make bacon or pork chops. This is over. You have to be able to tell yourself what you're going to do. You can't just repetitively do the same thing over and over. Insanity, as you say, Pastor? That's insane. Let go and really let God. If you want all that God has for you to walk in his fullness, you must allow him to search your inner parts and surrender to his masterful hands. Amen? Amen. Some things you're going to be able to work out, other ones you simply need to walk out. What happened? This is over. Amen. If you don't, the things you don't do right, you'll do over. Amen. Connect your life to Christ. God gave Paul grace and power to overcome the thorn, but he didn't take it away. So God gives us visions to keep us perish, keep us passionate, and thorns to keep us authentic, to assemble ourselves. The word tells us that where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Keepeth the law. Now, we all see in society what the law is doing. Reigns on the just and the unjust. Saint and sinner. So we see when we're keeping the law, that's a process of evolution. He, not we. And then, we, not me. The emptiness of an open heart creates a cavity for God to fill. But a closed mind never receives anything from God. The unthawing peace that Pastor Cynthia said today that coming to church is not a spectator event. I'm just going to come here and sit and look around. I've already done it for you, saints, beginning in 1983. I've done looked at everything that can be looked at. I've done sat and been emotionless for everything, but I should have been emotional. I've already done, done it for you. So this is not a spectator's event. We need to come in and shake, 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 shake the devil off. If not, he's going to grapple and strapple us and pull us down. We need to let go and let God say, amen. 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 He, not we, and then we, not me. Collectively, it's a team. Yeah. Because gossip, bitterness, well, I'm, I'm just weak. And then when you are weak, the devil the devil is going to infuse you with how you develop. He's going to hold your lips and have you make a mess of stuff mm -hmm. if you're not connected to Christ. If you're connected to Christ and you're weak, you'll become strong. Connected to the enemy, he going to get a hold of your lips and have you make a mess of stuff. I didn't mean that. I, that's not what I thought. What I, I, and before you know it, you have created a mess that you'll have to go, Lord, forgive me. Again, the emptiness of an open heart creates a cavity for God to fill. Our pastors wanted to say that when we're broken and fractured, it's easier for the light to get in. You keep your shield and your breastplate up. I'm going to let nothing appear. 
God's going to penetrate you one way or the other. So it would be best that you would lower it and take it off and let him have his way. But if your mind is closed, you ain't going to receive nothing. The only difference between you and the person that you admire in life is their perspective on life. I really like that person. Every time I see them, they're smiling. Every time they go through something, it seems like it's okay. And we all know in learning from war room, we all have our secret closets where we get ugly because of life. And then the Bible mentions brightening up our countenance. Iron sharpeneth iron. Brother or sister born for adversity, but a true friend loveth at all times. The times Christian accountability where we can reach out to the true friends that love us and fill in so weak. You are strong. Should not take music and a can of spinach to prove that out. But the social message in the cartoon was simply that. Anytime he was weak, he went to a source and became strong. That was just a cartoon and it was silly. It didn't make sense. The color those tender biblical screenwriters behind, they could not, they loved the Lord so much, so how do we do it? We'll just trick America with a social, social message. Same application. When you're weak, you become strong. You don't need a can open. Back then, it would have been manual. You'd have been thumbing with it, breaking nails, and hurting your hand. We have the Lord. Simply need to tell yourself you'll get the same impact. And don't allow people to weigh you down and leave you living it so they can have fellowship and you can have failure. You know, a lot of times we're around people and they know what they're doing. You should too. Amen? Amen. Put it on. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed of, don't be ashamed of who you're connected to. You simply trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. And all that ways acknowledge him. He, the word shall again, of the Lord say from the scripture reading, shall, shall absolutely direct your past. I don't know what I'm doing, Lord. Then somehow you'll get a GPS, a God positioning sensor to pick you up. We go through things in life <clears throat> in purities. We said purity, free from contamination. So sometimes we're in environments and more so often now where we just become contaminated, either from the air or the food or something that we, you know, put the intake in. And then when we get better, when the purification process takes place, we are better from it. But it does not stop us from going through it. We go through it, we become weaker, we feel, but the Lord gets us to it as we become stronger. If you just wallow in it and give up, had a call last week, Two weeks ago, the Elizabeth City stop. Um, he, my, my brother was giving up and just ready to go. And it was a difficult conversation in a sense because, well, they released him from the hospital and he was fine, but now we can tell he's giving up. When folks can say that, you know, we want to, well, well done. Before we get to the well done, contend. We need to be able to contend in life. There are some things are like we honestly do have to fight for when it comes to our faith. Remember, your strength, no matter how much or little, is made perfect in weakness if you're connected to the master. And if you ain't connected to no source, or it's the wrong source, you may get a lot of grandstanders, but they're going to clearly see, oh yeah, he weak, she weak. Always believe in miracles. Name for a reason, I would imagine, in time. So no matter what happens to you in life as you go through life, the profoundness of it is um, you weren't named excuses, or might be you were named miracle. And even though the why is there for the eye, phonetically when we hear it, it's the same. So it's what we believe, so always believe, just in the essence of the name itself, for a reason. Your strength, no matter how, because we're all given a measure. And we can't sit on that measure, as Pastor said, when we come in. So remember, it's already been sat on for you. Opposite of Deacon Lane, over there by that speaker. That was me, he ought to go. Extinguishing spirit. Didn't care, again, the pastor, but let's, let's just pay so we can leave. Or 
what does it take? And then when God had his way, stuff began to happen in life. And when this plastic chess point came out, chemotherapy had his way. Because I remember Sister Gustav would tell you the period of time you just didn't happen. Because whatever you exist, Sister Karen, all those green Sundays, I never confess you to look back and I never, my Lord, I'm never going to be whole again. I'm always going to feel sick. And then Jacob's charcoal, monumental day for me, because we sat and 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 I'm like, Lord, everything in my little tummy is here ready to come to check that out. And it was a time that, Lord, and it was just a lot of, like, pastor, help me Jesus all the time. All the time. I'm like, gosh, this woman going to say, help me Jesus all her life, and the answer is yes. You know, because I was a part of that equation. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. I'm like, wow. Look, you know. She could have said other things in the vernacular and colloquialism and all kinds of fresh, you know, hip techno terms and all that. She did. You know, so in her purification process, she simply said, help me, Jesus. And I believe he helped her. How about you? Amen. And then the two elements of that, it works both ways. So we connect ourselves to Christ because, you know, you know how us men will be ourselves to an anchor, um, a titanium anchor, and we wrap it, and we wrap it, and we wrap it, and we can't move this, and we know God is shaking the whole earth to loosen that up. Amen. So if hope really is the anchor that buoys our soul in times of trouble, let this be the Bible, what we're buoyed to. Stuck in the docks, living in the port, sailing on the high seas, cleave to this Bible. And when you feel weak, Know that you are strong. <clears throat> if you want to be saved today, or if you're already saved, I promise you, on the authority of the Word of God, that if you come to Him, He will not cast you out. Amen. And He will receive you. And if He will receive you, He'll keep you. Yes. His strength really is made perfect in your weakness. Yes. I would ask that you apply, and as you apply this Word in your life, remember King Saul at a time where David should have been being celebrated and praised. Remember all the stuff in your life that you go through. Remember the jet engine and the jet pilot. When that thing runs out of fuel, it quits whining. But sometimes we keep the source alive. Sniveling, whatever. How you doing today? You don't have to say a word. People can tell. We have to be able to brighten up our countenance and put it on, put it on. The Garden of Gethsemane. What happened there if we could simply, we wouldn't be here without it. The evolution and all this other stuff would have gone another way. How you feeling today, huh? Pretty weak? Regardless of how you feel, how you feeling today? I'm strong in the Lord today. You may feel otherwise, but it's trajectory of what you project that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Being done in the dark will be revealed in the daylight. And if you're praising him in your secret closet, he'll be see you in testimony. When it's time to all week long, it's a rehearsal. This morning, do a testimony service. And prior, as pastor took the can over and opened it up, you can't do that if you're not able or capable. And everyone in here is able or capable. It's how you just snap that cable from the devil to let go. Amen. You just have to move your shoulders. You all to be able to praise the Lord in your own way. And if it's not open up your mouth, then yeah, always going to be careful of that up here because if I disappear, you know, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I'm chasing the turn mats out there awake now. So if I do that again next week and fall through the floor, then y'all know we got some exterminating to do. But pressing on in all seriousness, in your weakness, <clears throat> you're strong. Don't allow people your environment. Water is a ship's environment. If it gets in it, it sinks. It has to be able to sail through it, around it. But if water gets in, it sinks. If people are your environment, much like the same thing, once you go to close your eyes at night, and if you're not thinking about Christ, neither give place to the devil. And the 
word tells us before that, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Stupid person, I see that. No, when you close your eyes. Don't let the sun go down finding you nursing a grudge. And every lady in will tell you when you nurse something, it's a big grudge. That chip on your shoulder will become a boulder on your shoulder. Sanitize your mind for peace, not being upset or disturbed. I can't sleep. I'm just laying here thinking about it all. Then you're weak. Lord, I love you. Bless my mess. It was a terrible day. I believe in your word. You have to be able to speak those things in life. Amen. The amplification of Amen. simplification. Said nothing difficult there. The amplification of simplification. And then the Lord really hears as you lay down to sleep flat prone in your bed and not in the pews in the church, the application of that portion becomes real time. Your strength is made perfect by being connected to Christ. And his strength really is perfect in your weakness if you will allow. God bless you equals more than enough. May grace and peace abound in your life today and in the coming days. Pastor Ray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. That was Christ's answer to Paul when he said, I need you to take this thing away from me. His It's not our strength. Amen. It's not us taking on the supernatural. It's him in us. Hallelujah. He provides us what we need. Hallelujah. In the time of distress, in the time of the storm, in the time of happiness and joy, he supplies our need. Hallelujah. And when we do get weak, and we do get trouble, and we do go through some things that, that we don't want to go through. We say, Lord, take this away from me. Yeah. He says, but my grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. What I have that I give to you is enough to keep you. When you're feeling that I can't make it, depend on me. And I will give you what you need to get through the storm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you.